Yo, 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 it's your boy back at it like a bass addict in the garage for another top five summer baits video. And today we're talking walking baits. You can definitely catch top water fish at any time of year, but summertime is that prime time when those fish are really active, the bait fish are moving around a lot. Um, and that's really when top water comes into play. Um, especially those fast moving top water baits that you can cover water with like a walking bait. Uh, so that's definitely why it's one of my top five favorite baits to throw in this season, covering that water, finding those hungry bass, and getting them in the boat. Without further ado, we'll just jump into talking about some of the areas that I like to throw a walking bait um, so y'all can understand what I'm looking for out on the water and hopefully that translate into some of your fishing. So for me, I'm not throwing the walking bait up shallow. Um, against cover too much. I've done it, I've caught fish like that, but I think where it excels is more in open water. Um, so around, it can be around cover and structure, um, but not necessarily target casting at stuff on the bank. So um, usually in those situations, I'll opt for a frog or a buzz bait or a popper or something like that. But with the walking bait, I'll target stuff like outside weed lines. As y'all know, I fish a lot of grassy lakes. So um, finding those outside edges, throwing that walking bait and just walking it along that, that weed line. Um, a lot of those fish are positioned to ambush bait fish. So that's just a great place to throw it. And um, another thing I'll look for is just long tapering points. If you're on more of a reservoir type fishery and it's got those big points that stick out far into the lake. Those are great areas um, where bass will position themselves to ambush and, and push schools of bait fish as they're swimming through the lake. So um, looking for that type of stuff like rocky points. So fisheries like Lake Berryessa or Lake Shasta, you can find some of those, those points that stick out and, and just fire that get up on the, on either side of the point, fire it up on top and just, and walk it. And you'll just see those fish come up. Sometimes one fish, sometimes it might be a big school of bass. So that's a great thing to target. Also like marinas around docks and stuff in the summertime, bass will push bait fish up into um, marinas. And so you can just kind of, maybe not, you can throw the walking bait into the, the boat slips and stuff, but also just on that outside, edge that front edge of the the docks you can just kind of get parallel and just fire along that and walk your walking bait a lot of times the bass will suspend under the docks and the boats and and they'll come up and get a top water so there's a ton of places you can throw a top water um, i think the common theme is is finding the bait fish because um, where the bait fish are that's where the bass are going to be and that's where they're probably going to be more actively feeding and um, you need to find actively feeding fish to get them to eat a top water. Um, it's hard to get fish in a negative mood um, to come up <laughs> and eat on top. So um, those are some of the key areas. Definitely you, you can throw it in a lot of places as long as um, there's nothing to get stuck on the treble hooks. So don't limit yourself to these areas that I'm talking about. Be creative, but that's kind of some of the areas that have worked best for me. Next, we'll just talk about how I'm working these baits real quick. It's very simple. Um, I'm trying to cover water, so I'm making long casts, firing these things out there. As soon as it hits the water, I'm getting it going. I'm not letting the ripples settle or any of that other stuff that, that people do with some other top waters. With the walking bait, I'm casting it out there and I'm getting it going because I'm imitating fleeing bait fish on the surface in open water. They're not going to be sitting there. They're going to be moving. So. As soon as it hits the water, I'm starting my retrieve. Usually I'll start with kind of a medium speed walk. So I'm just working that rod tip, getting that bait to go. A lot of these baits are really easy to walk just because of their shape. So you shouldn't have any problem um, walking the dog with these baits. But yeah, I'll just try out that medium re retrieve speed, steady walk, not really pausing it or anything like that. And I'll try that out that doesn't work next cast or next couple casts I'll try kind of speeding it up walking a little quicker 
If that doesn't work, I'll slow, slow it down and do a slower walk. Um, and then if that doesn't work, I'll kind of do a mix. So I'll do a kind of medium walk and then I'll mix in some speed ups and basically just like a jerk bait retrieve. You're playing with your cadence until you get bit. So messing around with those fish and letting them tell you what they want. And on any given day, it could be a different retrieve. So always just being open-minded, not getting stuck in the same walking the dog speed motion that you've always fished. So um, always be playing around with your retrieve. Even in the same day, you might have in the morning, they might want it faster. And then in the middle of the day, they might want more of a slower methodical walk. So just messing around with your retrieve in that way. Now we'll just talk about the baits that I like. I'm um, just going to keep it simple and talk about two baits, the ones that I throw the most, the ones that I have the most confidence in, and they both come in two sizes that I like. So um, I'll link everything in the description and y'all will have that. So if you're interested in any of these baits, you can just go click the links down below um, and buy whatever you need. So first bait I'll talk about is the Tekle Kick Knocker. Um, just a very standard spook style profile, um, very similar to a Vixen or a Rover, um, which I'm also gonna talk about, but just that very standard um, spook style profile, long, slender, kinda got that pointed head, and it, there's not much to it. It just it has a nice walk. It's got a nice knock in there, so. You can call some of those fish up um, from a little bit further away uh, if you've got a little stain in the water. And I think sometimes those fish just want a little noise. Sometimes they want a little, something silent, but um, I like this knock. It's not too obnoxious. It's not real like rattly. It's just like a good, yeah, it's just a good knock. So really like that bait. It is a little expensive, so. If you're on a budget, maybe not the best bait, but it's real consistent. It's really easy to walk and it gets bites. So um, this is kind of the standard size. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long it is, but I'll put that in the description as well. It's probably like five and a half inches long or so. Um, so I love that guy. And then they make the, the kick knocker pup. So that's just the smaller size. So. If you got smaller bait fish, maybe you've just got smaller fish that you're targeting, you're fishing ponds, or you're just not chasing giants, throw the smaller guy. Sometimes that'll get you some extra bites, um, but it's just a smaller version. Pretty much same knock, um, same same walk. Everything's nothing's different. It's just a smaller profile. So that's bait number one. And then bait number two is the River to Sea Rover. A um, little cheaper, but another great bait. That one's got a very similar um, kind of knock. It's got a little bit of a louder rattle. And then I think there's some smaller BBs towards the back. So you get that knock and then you get a little bit of a kind of that rattly sound as well. But I caught a lot of fish on this guy in the state championship at New Maloney's. So if you haven't seen that video, check that out. I caught a, a few key fish early in the morning on the top water. They would just come up schooling on shad and I would just kind of take advantage, fire in there. Um, and this was the bait that was getting it done. So uh, kind of they're interchangeable, but I think just each walking bait on the market has its own unique sound so playing around with that so maybe i'll start out with the kick knocker and they're just not eating it or they're slapping at it and missing it and just want something a little different a little different sound that might be the difference between having those fish miss your bait and having those fish choke your bait so um the rover this is the 128 size and that's kind of my go-to i always start with the bigger bait um unless i just know um, that fishery has really small bait, but usually I'll start with the, the bigger bait and then go down to the smaller bait. So this is the Rover 98, similar to the Kick Knocker Pup. It's just a downsized version of that, that Rover. 
still walks great. Um, but only thing about the 98 compared to the, the kick knocker pup is it comes with two hooks instead of three. So, um, sometimes those fish are, they're going to come up and slap at your bait and it's nice to have that extra, <laughs> that extra treble hook just because those fish are tough sometimes, especially with spotted bass, like on new Maloney's you want every hook point you can get because they're just tough to get in the boat. So that is a downside of the 98, but it still catches fish and it's snack size. So a lot of times they'll just get the whole thing in their mouth if it's a good one. But those are the two baits that I'm going to recommend for now. Um, there's a bunch of other good ones out there, but those are the two that I throw the most. So um, that's what I'll share with y'all. Next thing I'll talk about is color. With my walking baits, I keep my colors pretty simple like everything else, but especially with the walking baits, I'm pretty much solely imitating bait fish. And so those, that color range is very small. It's pretty much just your whites and your clear. So if I'm fishing a little more stained water, I'll usually go with something a little more solid white, a bone or just a white sexy shad, something like that. And if the water's a little more clean, I might go with something um, more translucent or something with some flash in it. So straight chrome is kind of a slept on color um, that I'll throw in clear water or just these more translucent colors. Um, I can't remember. I think this is called abalone shad. Yeah, it's like a clear, but then it's got that shiny foil in the middle that kind of gives off some flash and then a black back and a little bit of chartreuse, but very simple on the colors. Ghost Minnow is another kind of translucent, um, more natural color, throw in clear water, but very simple with the colors. Um, I'm kind of a, a simple guy when it, when it comes to colors and that's kind of what I stick to. Next, I'll just talk about my rod, reel, and line setup. Um, I've kind of gone back and forth with a lot of different setups for my top waters. It's kind of a weird thing to dial in just because there's different size top waters and you're dealing with treble hooks, but you're throwing braided line and it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of funky, but I've kind of settled on some sort of range with my rods. Um, my reels and line is pretty dialed in, but um, the one I'll talk about right now, it's a seven, three medium heavy. so. I'll pretty much, for the more standard, bigger top waters, um, I'll throw a medium heavy. Just not a crankbait rod, not a glass, super soft rod, just a standard composite rod, but a medium heavy. Um, I guess some medium heavies can be a little stiffer than others, but um, a relatively soft medium heavy. You are throwing treble hooks. You don't want to be pulling those hooks out of the fish. Um, but you do want to be able to drive those treble hooks when they come up and eat your bait. So, uh, medium heavy is a good place to start for those standard size baits. Um, seven, three is a good length for me to get long cast. Like I said, I'm trying to cover water. So having a little extra length, um, to, to bomb those baits out there helps. And then, um, not having too long of a rod that I'm slapping the water when I'm walking the dog. So just kind of an intermediate range. If you're shorter, maybe a seven foot might be better for me. I'm over six foot. So the seven, three is good for me. Um, and then on my reel, um, throwing the real brand doesn't really matter. I love Shimano. So this is a Shimano SLX XT. Um, really affordable reel, um, but the important part is high gear ratio. So this is a XG, so 8.2 to one gear ratio. So like some of these other baits, like a jerk bait, you're not working your bait with the reel. I'm not re reeling the bait in. So the only thing that the reel is being used for is um, picking up my slack as I'm walking the dog. And that's really important to get a nice consistent walk so as I'm pulling my rod down I'm doing like half a real turn to pick up that slack so I can get the bait to to go back the other way so 
Um, that's why I like the fast gear ratio. And also just say, if I make a cast over here, I'm walking it and I see some fish blowing up over there, burn that thing in with that high gear ratio and make that cast. And sometimes that can be the difference between getting a fish, a key fish in a tournament and not. So um, that's why I throw those high gear ratios. And then my line, I'll throw um, 40, usually 40 pound braid. Um, when I'm making those long casts, that thinner braid just gets out there really far. You want that floating line. Obviously you're throwing top water. You don't want fluorocarbon pulling your bait down. So have to have that braid, but kind of a trick. This is a popper, but kind of a trick that I do. Let me get this off here. Hopefully y'all can see that, but it's a, just a little short fluorocarbon leader. Like I'll even go like four inches. It doesn't have to be this long, um, but anywhere from like four inches to eight inches of fluorocarbon um, attached to your braid will help your bait not foul up as much because when you're you're walking the dog with just straight braid that braid is kind of limp and sometimes on the cast or on the retrieve that trub that front treble hook will grab your line and then your cast is ruined so um, throwing that little piece of fluorocarbon on the front it's more stiff so it kind of stays out in front of the bait more and it doesn't grab and foul as much as just straight braid I also think just having that little piece of fluorocarbon will kind of keep the nose of the bait down and it keeps it a little more level um, and it'll walk through like some more choppy water. But that's just my theory. It's mostly just to keep it from fouling up, but that's a little trick that I like to do um, with my walking top waters. And then lastly, um, I do change out my hooks. So I'll link some hooks. Um, in the description, I usually like a feather treble on the back, so I'll link a feather treble and then I'll just link um, the regular treble hook that I like to throw on the other um, hook hangers. But that's pretty much it for my rod, reel, line, blah, 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 blah. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's not a complicated bait once you get kind of the hang of walking the dog um, because that cadence is kind of the key to the bait. You're imparting the action, you're triggering the fish. Um, but besides that, a lot of these baits do the work by themselves. They call up those fish and they get some really fun bites in the summertime. So um, if, if you like top water and you haven't thrown a walking bait too much, give it a shot. Really fun bite. And I've caught a lot of nice fish doing it. So. Um, yeah, I think we've got one more video to go for our top five summer bait series. Um, hopefully all these videos have been helpful for y'all. Hopefully y'all have caught some fish using some of these baits that I've recommended. Um, but yeah, as always, I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, we're above 2,000 subs now, which is crazy. Less than a year, already at 2,000 subs. So thank y'all so much for the support. Um, they're just going to keep going, keep pumping out the videos, keep fishing tournaments, keep catching big bass and just growing as we go. So, um, hopefully you all are here for the journey for the long run and there's a lot more better stuff coming. So just stay, stay with me. I know it's, it's a little rough in the beginning, just figuring out this whole YouTube thing, content creation thing, but, um, we're getting somewhere and. Um, hopefully I'm helping some people catch some fish. That's, that's really what I've set out to do with these videos. So yeah, without, without saying any more, just thank you for watching and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.